morning, welcome to Ari Classics. Another early morning. A bit of a grey sky, but it's not raining, which is a bonus. And I've got to say, the rain does definitely stop clear. Right, we're off in the recovery truck. And um, we're going to pick something up. So we've got a pretty long drive ahead of us today. Um, probably, I don't know. It shouldn't be. Um, but we're going down towards Kings Lynn Way. And I think it's the A14 or something like that. This is just oh, it's a nightmare road, honestly. So I've got my sweets. I got off Davy the bricklayer yesterday. Well, off his wife. So they'll keep us entertained a bit. Um, I'm waiting for my co-pilot to come. She'll share a bit of the driving today, and uh, like I say, we'll see what we bring back. Um, without ranting and raving on about anything at the minute, um, the inquiries are picking up a little bit. Um, I'm 100% convinced that things are a bit quiet um, because of the weather. You know, uh, a couple of people rang us last week, yeah, I'm interested in the MG you have for sale. Can I come up and have a look at it? I'm interested in the Vauxhall you have for sale. Can I come? I said, you can, but I said, if it's raining, I ain't taking it out. And it's not that I'm being funny, it's just these cars have been, a lot of them have been nurtured all their lives and they've never been out in the wet. And when I get, if I take, when I'm for a test drive, honestly, it takes about two hours to shuffle the shore around to get them out, which I'm not bothered about. But then it takes about another two hours to dry them off and put them back and it's just a it's just a nightmare. So roll on the summer, that's what I say. It's gotta get it's gotta get better, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's gotta stop raining. I mean it's not raining this morning, but it doesn't look too clever. Um what else has been happening? What else has been happening? What else has been happening? Um uh, been on a few bits and bobs in a plant auction the other day. Um, plant machinery is definitely not on the fall, it's through the roof. Some of the stuff you could have bought cheaper if you bought it new, but that's just the way it is. Anyway, he's my co-pilot. He's the co-pilot. Morning. Morning. Look at that happy smiling face. Always happy. Always happy, You're always smiling. Eh? Good old Mandy. <laughs> I'll get wrong for that. <laughs> So I'm taking this Rover 12 out for a run. We're going to take it through to Durham and up the bank. I always test all my cars, Potter's Bank. You see my father-in-law who lives up there, uh, Russ, Russ McGlenn, ex-Durham City car dealer for many, many years. And uh, say what he thinks of the car. There's one thing for sure. I'll not be able to sell it to him. Morning, what the Hardy Classics. It's dry, but it's cold. And a quick catch up just to tell you what we've been up to. As you'll have noticed, we have another Austin C cab van just arrived. Uh, picked it up the other day. So nothing with it. Um, I know it's a runner, but that's about as much as we know. It's 1926, so it's an early one. Whether it's a real, well, well, whether it started life as a van or a car, I don't know. But there's stacks of Austin 7 fanatics out there who will tell you if that's the right nut on there. So I'm sure with somebody out there will say it started life as a car or it started life as a van. Whatever it started life at, it's two years off being 100 and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's living up with sign writing there, proper sign writing, Austin 7. 
the gold there looks absolutely gorgeous um if if well it will be coming for sale anybody buys it wants to keep the austin 7 service they just need to get this door painted and put your own little your own mark on it quick whip round it look at the size of it man it's, it's unreal isn't it really when you think people those days is a a form of uh well commercial business really you know imagine driving to newcastle in that This one's got a bench seat in, which I don't think was um, an original fitting. But again, I might be wrong. But it does make it more drivable with having the bench seat in. So I'm going to do a walk around video about that later. So I don't know loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads about that. Just show the engine quickly. There's the engine. Looks like it's still in a magneto ignition. And I want to tell you, get that thing back on. We'll walk the garage and see where we are. So, Mark's back off his holidays. Came back yesterday. Let's put the kettle on for him. We're coming in in a minute. Before he left, we had my Range Rover in a few bits and pieces. Oh, squeeze around here. Careful of the pit. Right, so basically the Range Rover had some noise on the front pulleys. Uh, so we've changed all attention to pulleys in the crankshaft pulley. Not a main feat and not a cheap feat either. Um, I think the parts were well into a thousand quid just to change the pulleys. Um, right, what else has been happening? Oh, well, that's going to auction. The bubble car. We're going to send that to, uh, hopefully, tenants auction for their summer transport sale. I'll put some details on later. Uh, what else has been happening? Oh, yeah. Sun's out, sort of. Ferrari's out. Let's get a faster door. I want that goes up straight. Right, I had that rover out the other day on Sunday. Took it for a test drove, drive, even. And it drove really well. And I mean really well for a wooden wheel car. Guy contacted us on Friday asking about that little Morris Miner over here, this one, which we've had in for quite a while. We reduced the price of it a couple of months ago and it was uh, still here. We've had a couple of inquiries on it uh, and I don't think it would sell, but it's taken up a little bit of showroom space. He rang us. Made an offer on it, and lo and behold, he used to ruin the car 15 years ago because I was trying to tell him the spiel about how the, the wings have been painted, the bonnet's been painted. It wouldn't take a lot to paint the rest of the car, make a nice little car. And he interrupted and said, sorry, I've got a confession to make. It was my car, and I painted it. So that's that. So this is off to somewhere in Wales, Anglesey Way. So we're going to take that on Friday. Last night, a guy contacted us about this little Honda CB 50J, which isn't on our website for sale. And to be honest, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna sell it. Um, but I'm stuck for space, basically. I've, I know it's only a little bike, but I've got nowhere to display it. You know, if it drops over and falls on somebody. And I said I was finishing my bike, so he caught us at the right time. It's a lovely little thing, rare ends teeth. 10 times rarer than the Fizzy or an 8 by 50 10 times slower as well. But apparently he's coming for that today. So we'll have that one away. Talking of bikes, 
I'll just take you next door again. Right, I said I was not going to bother with any bikes anymore, but obviously I still have one or two uh, in the workshop and stuff. I will buy bikes at some point again, but at the minute I think the market's just a little bit iffy. This is an odd bike. It's an MZ, and I wouldn't have looked at one of these years ago, uh, to be fair. But the guy we bought it off, an old chap, uh, he'd obviously had it from new. He bought it new. Um, and it was just lying in his shed. I went to look at a couple of other bits and bobs he had for sale. He had a couple of mini pickups, a couple of mini vans and stuff. And uh, this was there. And this was sort of like, I don't know, an icebreaker. You know, I brought the ice by buying this. Um, formed a relationship. And, you know, I'll probably end up with them mini vans and pickups at some stage if he wants to part with them. As long as he's he's sensible with the price, like a lot of people have got to be. So we got it. We reconditioned it. I mean, reconditioned it. We recommissioned it. Uh, got it started. Got it running. I know he'll be looking and saying, "Why have you got a screwdriver in there?" Uh, it hasn't brought the ignition. It's a funny key that goes in there anyway. So it's a little MZ. It's a edge, and it comes with loads of bits of bobs with it. Loads of bits of history. Is it a classic? I think it's probably a future classic. How much is it? I don't know. Probably 1,500 quid will buy it. And it's in really, really good condition. And it's the kind of bike you could use every day. You know, because there's not that many classic bikes or appreciating classics that you can't use every day. It's a little two-stroke and it runs as sweet as a nut. I won't demonstrate it, but I will do a walk-around video if anybody wants to, to buy it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you it starting, running up the hill, whatever you want. But there you have it. Anyway, I'm going to take you in the office and show you what comes with that. <laughs> God almighty. You're frightening the life out of us. I'll be up in a minute. God, I'm frightening the life out of us there. Jesus. Happy birthday to you. You were born in the zoo. With the monkeys and the lions. And you look like one too. Boom, boom. There's a little song I made. Right. Um, right, while we're on. Yeah, can I help you? Honda. Right, paperwork for that little Honda. There's not a lot really. It comes with a little instruction manual. Uh, classic motorcycles. So I don't know what that is. Jap Fest. Comes with a, that's how it started life. There's a bundle of parts and he's obviously restored it in his spare time. Um, the MZ comes with old log boot, new log boot, set of keys that do the side panniers, not the, not the ignition, hence the screwdriver, spares manual, and it comes with a, a load of other stuff, it actually comes with a spare gasket set, I don't know whether that's a good thing or, or not, but it comes with loads of original, and these, these are going to be rare, dealer, dealer pamphlets, Showing the model in mean, that silver is actually the model that he's got, isn't it? The one we've got in stock at the minute. All the different colours, I think you could get them in green, whatever. So this one's good. If you're one of them guys who likes a bit of uh, provenance with your bikes or whatever you buy, um, personally, it doesn't bother me, but a lot of people like to know the history of things. I think once they get over a certain age, you could make anything up about something if you were unscrupulous enough. Like that little C van down there, it's a hundred year old. And if you can remember, you know, when it was made, you'd be a very clever man, wouldn't you? To be fair. So there you go. Right. Bye bye.